reads, On thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I also want to read from the New Testament, Ephesians 6, verse 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So, God, how do I share this with them? What do you want me to say? How do I go about giving this word that you have? You see, because God didn't give it normal. He didn't just give it the usual way. Because I said, okay, children, obey your parents. I can work through that, no problem. All right? Because I was a child myself before. And there's a way that, you know, I had to appreciate and honor my mother and my father and my household for the days that I did have with them. But God gave them just a little bit different this time. So I praise him today for how he has shared this word. I didn't know how he was going to get there, but he got there, not me. So anyway, I'm, basically, the word ties itself up in being honorable. Being honorable. God has always directed his people towards him. The children of Egypt were being led on the journey towards God. It wasn't just a promised land or what have you. They were always being led to what God called, you know, God work, I'll say. Just God work. Okay? Regardless, because see, this is not our home. Those who know Jesus Christ, this is not our home. So our journey in being honorable is being honorable always to God. So, how can I share this more with them? Well, he brought up Judge Judy Shiner. Is that her name? On TV, Judge Judy. So let's just say, for instance, you're on, you know, you're, you're sitting there and you happen to be in Judge Judy's courtroom. And Judge Judy, you come in and you state your case, you know how she goes with everything. And all of a sudden, she calls you an idiot. So you idiot. And characterizes you as lazy. And she screams at you like no other. All of a sudden, you don't respect her. You lose your desire to honor her. So instead of calling her Judge Judy, you decide to call her Judge Rudy, emphasizing the R, Rudy. She has taken the seat of the unhonorable in your mind because she has inflicted pain upon your heart. And before you know it, the bailiff is escorting you out of the courtroom. You have lost your responsibility of honoring. But God says, honor your mother and your father that your days may be long upon the land. He did not put a period on that. He did not put like, I should say he put a period on it, but he didn't put extensions. He didn't say, if they do this or if they do that. He said, honor them in spite of And he's saying, I'm sorry, but that's just my way. There is no way around that. You must honor regardless. So then you begin to think, hmm, how can I relate this? to my own parents. Everybody start thinking about your own parents, and I guarantee you in this house today, many of you want to bust out crying. Some of you do. Some of you want to say, glory, thank you, Jesus. Okay, and some of you may be in between because certain things have taken place. See, God wanted me to speak to your pain today. For whatever reason, he said, speak to the pain today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get there. I hope that buzz don't ring on me. Um, we are to honor in life and death. If you are one whose parents have been unhonorable to you due to neglect, abuse, or um, abandonment, God has a plan for you. If you are one whose parents have been honorable or dishonorable and they are still alive, God has a plan for you. If you are one whose parents have been honorable or dishonorable and they have passed on, God still has a plan for you. Or maybe your situation is mixed in several of these examples, and you may even be the unhonorable, the one who has inflicted the pain. But God, as long as we're breathing, he still has a plan for you. Be honorable. Honor is continuous because it always starts with God, and God is from everlasting to everlasting. Honoring pleases God. It encompasses obedience, righteousness, and love. Who is the true object of honor? It is simply God. Honor brings righteousness for the kingdom of God. Wow. Here's what the heart, or here's the heart of what God has given me to speak to you today. And it's directed towards the hurting. Some of you are wondering what you are to do because you were only a child when someone took advantage of you. You've been wrestling and fighting with anger and annoyance on every side struggling 
you with this honor because you're your parents who stole your pride. Beating you and kicking you and smacking you all around. And though they may be dead, you're still on the ground. Touching you and feeling you and kissing you on the cheek. Taking away the virginity you never had a chance to keep. Telling you they love you yet breaking all the rules. Treating you like trash and calling you a fool. Threatening your life by saying don't tell or you I'll kill. Then ask them why aren't you smiling while eating the family meal. I truly want to stop and bring this to a halt. But the Holy Spirit says not yet. Keep talking about the assault. You can call all kinds of names, a bad names, every day from A to Z. And to this day, you're still answering names that really shouldn't be. My child, I've come to rescue you. This you will see. I have come to help restore your identity. If this has happened to you, my heart breaks at all your pain. Remember that godly suffering brings glory to my name. I know this is hard to understand and it boggles your mind. But to continue to honor God in a place in heaven, you will find. I, Jesus, am acquainted with all you had to endure. Because when I walked the earth, man abused me sore. They beat me so intensely that I wore my blood poured. They beat me over and over, right down to the core. They spit upon my face and characterized me as what I'm not. They were too busy harming me to ask about the gift I got. I know they were doing this. It's a result of sin. I have come to relieve you from all that pain within. There's a way to still bring honor to me, the one who you love. That is to forgive them and seek me as the Father above. Don't have to work out their own salvation while they still have time. You'll have to work on yours too to be identified as mine. You see, honor was never to stop at your parents' front door alone. Honor was to be directed towards this heavenly zone. Before we leave this conversation, here's one last thing I ask. Have you thought about how Satan tempted Jesus in every single way? What if he decided to be disobedient in few words he couldn't, he wouldn't say? The blood would have been ineffective in our lives would be doomed, but instead Jesus honored his Father and we have a glorious room. Forgive and be forgiven and cry if you have to, but refuse to be captured in pain that doesn't belong to you. Yes, you can still honor by doing what is right. Honor your father and mother. Honor never stops. It is something that goes on for eternity. We will honor God all the days of our life, but it is a choice. But it can still happen today. If you've been in pain and you've got things you need to have forgiven or you need to be forgiven, why not go ahead and allow God to do that? Because he's speaking to you today to let you know that he is already there. He has never left you. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And when your parents forsook you, whatever way they did, I have taken you up. Can you trust me? Honor your mother and father. Amen.